Hi everyone, thanks so much for tuning in today and practicing with me. Uh, for today's practice, you really just need your mat and if you have blocks, you can use them. If you have straps, you might uh, use it as well, but really we just need our yoga mats today. And also if you want to flow with music, we're not really adding music to our videos at the moment just so that you can hear our cues clearly. So if you like music, perhaps play it on a different device as you flow with me today. All right, so we're gonna get started. Find a comfortable seated position. You don't have to sit on your shins. You can sit cross leg you can sit with your legs straight out. You can even lie on your back if that feels more comfortable for you today. Shoulders soft, hands can rest on your knees, your thighs, your arms can also just rest by your side dangling. And just close your eyes. With your eyes closed, I want you to bring your attention to your breath. Breathing in and out through the nose, establishing a steady rhythm. Letting go of any strain in the body, any tension. Remembering that the breath will be your guide to your practice. So flowing to the rhythm of your inhales and your exhales. And we will start our practice with a sound of Om. Bring your palms together in front of your heart in prayer. Take a deep breath in. Oh. Bow your head and open your eyes with a few blinks. Release your palms, place your hands forward, come into a tabletop setup. If you have people joining you, just make sure you have enough space and you're watching or your pets and your friends that are around. Uh, let's start in the child's pose, reaching your palms forward, let your forehead rest. Stretching out the sides of the body, keep this child's pose a little more active, allow your elbows and your forearms to be lifted. Pressing your sit bones back. Breathe into the back body, especially the low back and the sides of your ribs. Breathe. Next time you inhale, take a deeper breath in. Open your mouth and sigh it out. And then lift your head up, walk your palms in, lift the hips, start to tuck your toes, and then come into your first downward facing dog here. In your down dog, just pedal your heels, Sway your hips, move around a little. Making sure that you're grounding into all your fingers, your knuckles, spreading the weight in your hands. And then lifting the sit bones up so that your heels ground down. Now, when you breathe in next, I want you to come forward to a plank position. From plank, just make sure that your stance is wide enough. So sometimes we take our down dog a little too short. I want you to try to separate your shoulder blades. Don't let your chest sink and try to tuck your tailbone. Drawing the lower belly in, pausing here. Feel how the weight is in your hands. Keep spreading that weight. Neck is nice and long. Breathe. Squeeze your inner thighs. Take a deep breath in. And then when you exhale, you will lower all the way lightly onto your chest. Untuck your toes. You'll slide your hands off the mat, bringing it onto the floor with your fingertips down, your elbows lifting up. Push your thighs into the mat, toes are reaching back. When you inhale, draw your shoulders back, lift your chest forward. And when you exhale, lower gently. We'll breathe in, lift up. Breathe out, lower. Again, inhale. Exhale. One more time, breathe. And release. Bring your hands back onto the mat, 
tuck your toes, hug your elbows in, draw your shoulders away from the ground. Use the help of the knees if you need. When you breathe in, push yourself back up to plank and then downward facing dog. Pedal up the heels again, keeping your arms strong, pushing the floor away, lifting the sit bones up. When you inhale, we'll come to plank pose. You can stay here on the next exhale, otherwise you can come down to a chaturanga. We'll push back to plank on the inhale, move back to downward facing dog on the exhale. Again, we'll breathe into plank. Feel free to use your knees, feel free to skip this chaturanga. Breathing out. Back to plank on the inhale, and then downward facing dog. So do your best to try to keep your core engaged so that you're not in your plank sinking your hips down when you come into your chaturanga. One more time, we'll inhale, come to plank pose. Exhale, chaturanga, back to plank when you breathe in, downward facing dog when you breathe out. Let's take a deep breath in through the nose. Open your mouth and sigh it out. Breathe in, come to plank again. Exhale, chaturanga. From there, you can come into a cobra. Draw your shoulders back, toes point to the back wall. You're also welcome to lift into an up dog. Thighs are lifted. And when you exhale, send your hips up, roll over the toes. Downward facing dog. From here, the first time when we walk our feet forward, take little steps. Looking forward, bringing your feet slowly to the top. Once you're at the top of the mat, inhale, halfway lift. Still kind of bend the knees. Hands can come to the shins. Your back muscles are strong. Try to lift your heart forward. Exhale, pull the navel in and fold. Press into your feet. Lift all the way up when you breathe in. Stretch. Exhale, release your arms by your side. So a flow. Breathe in. Lift the arms. Breathe out. Fold forward. Inhale to a halfway lift. Exhale, place your hands down, step or hop your legs back, find your chaturanga, then breathe into your back bend. Breathe out, send your hips up, roll over the toes, downward facing dog. Pause here, if you want to feel your sit bones lift up while your heels ground downwards. Melt your chest towards the toes, pressing into your fingers, into your knuckles. Then next time you inhale, so to look forward, exhale, bend your knees, walk, step, hop to the top of your mat, breathe in, halfway lift, hands can come to the shins, exhale, fold. Lift all the way up when you inhale, stretch. And when we exhale, we'll fold right back down again, hinging from the hips. Halfway lift, breathe in. Breathe out, place your hands down, step or hop back, find your chaturanga, breathe in, up dog, exhale, downward facing dog. Again, no strain in the neck here. Keep your sit bones lifted. Heels are grounding. Breathe slowly. The next time that you do inhale, start to look forward. Exhale, bend the knees. Again, walk, step, or hop to the top of your mat. Halfway lift, inhale. Full forward, exhale. Lift all the way up, inhale. Fold, exhale. One more round like this. Breathe in, halfway lift. Exhale, place your hands. Step or hop your legs back. Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, back to your down dog. Breathe. Try not to sink into your shoulders. Keep the sit bones lifted. Next time you inhale, look forward, exhale, bend the knees, walk, step, or hop, come to the top of your mat. Inhale to a halfway lift, exhale, fold. Lift all the way up, breathe in. When you exhale, release your arms by your side. Have your feet come together. So grounding down into all four corners of your feet, squeeze your legs. When you breathe in, bend your knees, come into a chair pose. Exhale, fold. Breathe in, halfway lift. When you place your hands down as you exhale, step, hop, or walk your feet back. Find your chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, back to your downward facing dog. Now from your down dog, we'll lift the right leg up when you breathe in. As you exhale, step your right foot forward, bring it between your hands. Keep your back heel lifted, bend the front knee. Inhale, lift into your lunge. Um, 
When you breathe up, place your hands down onto the mat. Step your right foot back. Again, we'll come into Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, back to your down dog. And then from here, left leg will lift up. Breathe in. Exhale, step your left foot forward. Bring it between your hands. Inhale, rise. Exhale, release your palms down. Step your left foot back. Come back to plank pose. Breathing in. Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe. Once again, you want to try to lift the sit bones up. At the same time, press your heels downwards, melting your chest towards the toes. Arms remain active as well as your legs. Then breathing in to look forward. Exhale, bend your knees. Walk, step, hop. Top of the mat. Halfway lift, breathe in. Breathe out, fold. Lift all the way up, inhale. And exhale, release your arms by your side. Have your legs come together and we'll come back to chair. Bend your knees, inhale, lift your arms up. Good. When you exhale, fold forward, hinge from the hips. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, place your hands down, step or hop back, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. From here, we'll float the right leg up. We're breathing in. Exhale, bring your right knee, touch your right elbow. Send the leg back up, inhale, exhale, step your right foot, bring it between your palms, bend the knee, come back to your lunge, and then slowly lower your left knee down. Allow the hips to melt, reach your arms up, palms together, bend your elbows, bring your thumbs to the back of your neck, push your elbows up, head into your forearms, hips forward towards the front edge of your mat. Take another inhale. Exhale, release your hands down. Keep your back knee on the mat. Grab your blocks if you need it. You're placing your palms on your blocks. You can push your hips back here, letting your right leg start to straighten. Flex the right toes. Pull it towards your face. Lengthen your chest forward. Slow breaths. Draw the navel in. One more breath in. One more breath out. And then when you inhale next, bend your front knee. Tuck your back toes, back knee stays lifted. Hands start to release, bring your palms into prayer. So to lean forward, I want you to keep your right leg bent so don't straighten the leg when we start to lift the back foot. And instead of hopping forward, I want you to slowly drag your left foot, float it up while keeping your right knee bent, and then step your left foot forward to meet the right, come into a chair, breathe in, arms reach up. Breathe out, fold forward. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, place your hands down. Again, step or hop your legs back, chaturanga. Up dog or cobra, breathe in. Downward facing down, breathe out. We'll move right into the left side. Left leg will lift up, breathe in. Exhale, bring your left knee, touch your left elbow. Then inhale, lift it back up. Exhale, step your left foot right between your hands. Bend the front knee, lift your arms up nice and slow. Square your hips, arms reach up towards the ceiling. When you exhale, lower your right knee downwards. Allow your hips to melt. Connect your palms, bend your elbows. Lift your elbows up, let your head gently press into your forearms. Allow your hips to melt forward. Breathe. So allowing the front body here to lengthen. Countering new, more hours that we probably spend sitting at home now. Next time you exhale, let your hands come down slowly. Once again, feel free to grab blocks or if you have maybe books or cushions if you need to. With sending the hips back, let the left leg start to straighten. Lengthen your chest forward. Try to take the rounding out of your spine. Breathe. Keep your neck long. So notice if you start to tense up your traps, your shoulders. Last breath here. And then from here, we will bend the front leg, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee. Hands start to come into prayer. Transferring all the weight to your left leg and try to keep your left knee bent so you're not straightening the leg. Lean forward, drag your right foot, float it out. Breathe, 
Step your right foot to meet the left. Both knees stay bent. Come back to your chair pose. Inhale. Exhale, just release. Arms by your side. Good. From here, we will inhale, lift the arms up. Keep your left arm up. Bring your right arm by your side. Add a side run here. Draw the ribs up. Press into both your legs. Squeeze your inner thighs. And then when you inhale, pull yourself back up. Switch sides. Try to tuck the tailbone a little bit. Draw your right ribs up. Breathe into the side body. And then when you inhale, come all the way back up. Both arms reaching. As you exhale, fold forward. Breathe in, halfway lift. Exhale, place your hands down. Step or hop your legs back. Chaturanga. Up dog or cobra, breathe in. Exhale, move back to your downward facing dog. Now from your down dog, we'll sweep the right leg up again. Breathe in. Bring your right knee to your left elbow when you exhale. Inhale, send the leg back up. Exhale, step your right foot. Bring it between your palms. Bend the front knee. Inhale, reach your arms up. Come back to a lunge. When you exhale, lean forward. Sweep your arms back. Try to make a nice line from your crown to your left heel. Keep your neck long. And allow your left hand to slowly come down. Use a block if you need here. Reach your right arm up. Keep your right knee bent. Good. From here, breathe. Try to turn your chest. And when you exhale, release your right hand down onto the mat. Step your right foot all the way back. You can do your, just your regular vinyasa. You can keep your right leg lifted. Chaturanga. Bend the right knee, stand your left toes, find your up dog here, squeeze in the right hamstring. Exhale, we come back to down dog with the right leg still in the air. Step the foot forward between your hands, and we'll open up to warrior two. Ground your back heel, bend your front knee, bring your left arm back, right arm forward. Look at your right index finger. Then when you inhale, you'll reverse your warrior. Left arm can slide down the line or come across your low back. Keep that front knee bent. And then when you exhale again, bring your right elbow onto your right thigh, reach your left arm forward. Right arm is weightless, so try not to sink into the arm. And in fact, if you can, reach your right arm forward as well. Both legs are strong. Take another inhale, reach your arms. When you exhale, lift the back heel, turn your chest to face the ground, bring your hands back onto the mat, use your blocks if you need, back knee stays lifted, push your hips back. Squaring the hips. So right thigh bone draws in. Push your left hip forward. Reach your crown to the front edge of your mat or towards just the front here. Breathe. When you inhale next, we'll bend the front knee again. Left hand will stay. One more time, we're going to lift the right arm up, coming back to the twist. Stay in this twist, or you can walk your right foot back. When you walk it about halfway, turn your back foot as well. So all toes point to the right side. Lift your hips. Try not to sink into your side body. Take another inhale. And when you exhale, see if you can bring the right foot all the way back. Right hand down. If the foot was still at the top of the mat, you step the right foot back. Come to plank. Find chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, back to your downward facing dog. Then from there, we'll breathe into plank. Exhale, lower all the way onto the mat. Untuck your toes, draw your shoulders back. Your hands remain light, so don't push too hard into the palms. Lift your chest forward, squeeze your back muscles. Exhale, lower. Again, draw your shoulders back, keep your hands light, lift your chest forward. Exhale. One more time, breathe. Lift your heart. Exhale, lower. Tabletop when you inhale. Exhale, come into your child's pose. Breathe into the low back. Just notice if there's any sensation in your hips. Notice how right side of your body might feel different from the left side of your body. The next time you inhale, come back to your downward facing dog. Right, and from down dog, we'll walk the hands to the back of the mat. From the back of the mat, separate your feet as wide as your mat. Start to bend your knees and let your hips sink. Come into your malasana. Try to keep your heels down so that you're getting a stretch in your calves or your ankles if the heels tend to want to lift up. Ground down through the hips, through the heels. Try to lift your chest up. Breathe. So first option, you can just stay at the back of the mat. Just 
pausing here in your malasana. Try not to sink too deep into the hips, perhaps lifting the hips a little higher. Second option, you can start to make your way forward to the top of the mat. How I like to do it uh, is come through crow all the way to the top of the mat. So you're gonna bring your hands down, shoulder width maybe a little wider, bring your knees to the back of the arms, pick up your feet for a moment, or you pick up one foot at a time, and then you place it down, then you walk your hands forward, and then you shift forward again. Look forward, don't look back. So either stay at the back of the mat or start to walk your way forward in your crow towards the top of your mat. Breathe. So perhaps you're reaching the top of the mat if you are traveling forward and then you can stay here, squeeze your heel up towards your bum, trying to keep your neck nice and long, perhaps maybe even swaying a little bit if you have music playing at home. If you're at the back of the mat, start to place your hands down, walk your hands forward. If you're at the top of the mat, you can bring your feet down, step the feet back, or you can shoot it back from your, uh, from your crow into your chaturanga. Flow through your vinyasa if you like, and we'll meet in downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Sigh it up. We'll float the left leg up when you breathe in. As you exhale, bring your left knee to your right elbow, opposite arm. We're gonna send the leg back up, breathe. And then we'll step the left foot right between the hands. And draw the shoulders away from the ears. And then from here, we will open up warrior two. Right arm back, left arm forward. Reverse your warrior, breathe in. Exhale, bring your left elbow onto the thigh. Reach your right arm forward. Look up towards the ceiling. Breathe. Good. Left arm also reaches forward. Both legs are super strong. Reach the fingertips to the front. Take another inhale. When you exhale, start to look down, place your hands down, spin your back heel up, and start to push your hips back, straightening the left leg slowly. Allow the head to reach forward. Square your hips, pull your left hip and left thigh bone back, pushing your right hip forward using blocks if you need for your hands. All right, when you inhale, you will bend your left knee, right hand stays, left arm will lift up. Just twisting. Try to keep your left hip a little lower, pushing your right heel straight back, turning your chest open, reach your arms wide. Take another inhale. When you exhale, place your left hand down. Left foot goes back. You can do your vinyasa regularly or you're keeping your left leg lifted, chaturanga. Bend your left knee, squeeze the heel in. Inhale, lift your chest, try to keep your thighs from touching. Exhale, lift your hips back up, left leg to the sky. Step it forward between your palms again. And then when you're ready, come back to a high lunge. Breathe, so square your hips. And then breathing out, lean forward, reach your arms back. Nice straight line. Draw the navel in, head and heel, pulling in opposite directions. Take one more inhale. As you exhale, place your right hand down. Lift your left arm up again. Right, stay here or you're walking your left foot back halfway, turning all the toes to the left side of your mat. Good. Draw your left thigh bone back. Try not to let your hips sink. Reach up. And then from here, send your left foot all the way back. Squeeze your thighs. Left hand comes down. Plank pose, breathe in. Chaturanga, breathe out. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe. Right from here, we're going to walk the hands towards the feet. Separate your feet as wide as the mat. Grab opposite elbows, bend the knees as much as you need. Allow your spine to relax. Dangle the spine here. Sway gently side to side. Your first option, stay here. You can hug your legs. Second option, you can come back to your squat. Pausing here. Third option, you working your way to the top of the mat with your crow again, or this time you might want to hop a little, play around with your balance. So pick what works for you at this point in your practice or this particular day that you are practicing 
on your mat. So if you are doing crows, just as that we I've shown you earlier, or if you're doing little hops, nothing fancy needs to happen. You want to bend your knees. Think about lifting your hips up. So you might just be light hops. Otherwise, try to lift the hips, land light. Making your way slowly towards the top of the mat. Don't worry about trying to lift the hips all the way. Once you're at the top, you can come back to a squat. You can stay in your crow. You can try to hold your hop. And then when you're ready, let's send the legs back or walk your hands forward if you're at the back of the mat. Come to your down dog through a vinyasa if you like. Skip it if you need. And we meet in downward facing dog. So from your down dog, we'll float the right leg up again. As you exhale, step your right foot forward, bring it between your palms, we'll bend the front knee, reach your arms up again. Five from here, open up warrior two. Trikonasana, right leg straightens, reach your right arm forward and down, lift your left arm up. Breathe. Uh, then from here, bend your right knee, sweep your left hand down towards the floor, walk it all the way to the back of your mat to your left foot, turn all your toes to face the back of your mat. Walk your left foot to the left edge of your mat, lower your right knee down. So you're coming to lizard. Hands, you can bring them on blocks or just stay on fingertips or even palms on the mat is fine. Let your hips melt forward, lift your chest up. Good. Breathe here. You can walk your right hand further forward in front of you so that you're not resting just on the wrist. Left hand can push your left hip away. Draw your left shoulder back. God, stay here. You can reach for your back foot. Allow your hips to melt. Uh, you're trying to draw the heel in, but not let your hips shift back towards the heel. So when the hips pull back, you're going to lose the stretch in your quads, even though you might be holding your foot. So try to keep the hold on your foot, but let your hips melt forward instead. And open your chest. Breathe. Letting that back foot go. Both hands come back onto the mat. Tuck your right toes. God will straighten the left leg slowly. So draw your left thigh bone into the hip socket. Breathe. And from here, we will send the left foot all the way back. Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, back to your downward facing dog. Now from your down dog, you will lift the right leg up again. Exhale, bring your right knee to your right elbow. Inhale, send it back up. Right knee to your left elbow. Send it back up. One more time, I'm going to bring the right knee to the right elbow. Just pause here, build strength. Try to bring your knee above your elbow, bending the elbows a little bit if you can. Stay here, or maybe you're trying to drag your left foot back, float it up for a moment. And then we're just going to send the left leg all the way back. Right leg lifts up to the air, breathe in. Step your right foot forward, bring it between your hands. All right, we're going to open up warrior two again. Bringing your, right, your left arm behind you, reaching for your right hip or towards the inner thigh. Keep the front knee bent, reverse your warrior inhale. Good. Let's keep bending that front knee, stretching the right side body. And then as you exhale, unwind both your arms, place them down to the inside of the right foot. And again, we're gonna walk it to the left side. Lift your back heel. Bend your left knee so you're facing the front of your mat again. All right, grounding all the weight into your front foot, just as we did earlier, we're going to place the palms back in prayer. Lean forward. Drag your right foot. Keep your left knee bent. And then place your left hand down. Maybe you can use a block if you need. All right, or hands on the floor. As you straighten your left leg slowly, reach your right arm up and open your body into half moon. From here, stay, find your balance. You're also welcome to bend the right knee, right hand grabbing the top of the foot and push your foot back. Slow your breath. Watch your balance. When you exhale, let that right foot go. Bring the right hand down onto the mat slowly. Move your blocks out of the way. Uh, from here, lifting the right leg up, draw the navel in, 
Just stay on your left leg. Left knee can be bent. It doesn't have to be fully straight. Stay here. If you're adventurous, you want to add a few hops, you can bend your left knee, try to lift your hips. You can also quickly move to a wall that hopefully doesn't have anything on it. You can use the wall as your spotter. But you want to just focus on lifting hips up. Don't worry if your hops feel really, really heavy and you're not really lifting the leg too much or not hopping at all today. That's fine. So if you're not hopping, step your right foot back and then your left foot back. If you are hopping, you can try to hop and send the left leg back slowly. Come back to a vinyasa. And we'll meet in downward facing dog. From there, lower your knees. Um, untuck your toes, melt your hips back, find a child's pose. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Sigh it out. Again, deep breath in. Sigh it out. From your child's pose, next time you inhale, just lift the head, walk your chest and legs apart so that you can come onto your hips. Add elbows digging down from your in your sphinx. So you want elbows under your shoulders, your forearms are parallel, palms are pressing down into the mat. Shoulders pull from the ears so that your neck is nice and long. Draw the lower belly in, so the few inches below your belly button, you're pulling that in as you lift your chest forward. So you want to keep your back muscles really strong. But you can tuck your toes here. Use the help of the knees if you need, or you can float the knees up first. When you inhale, dig into the elbows, lift your belly, try to tuck your tailbone. And then when you exhale, lower your hips slowly, untuck your toes, breathe in, lift your chest. Pause here, you can exhale, lift your elbows up. And then next time you inhale, if elbows are lifted, you will lower back down. Tuck your toes, breathe in, dig into your elbows, hug the ribs in, hug the lower belly up. Exhale, gently lower your thighs, untuck your toes, breathe in, lift your chest forward. And then staying or breathe out, you can lift the elbows as long as it doesn't dump into your lower back. So keep your chest pulling forward, lower belly drawn in. When we exhale, you can lower the elbows if they're lifted. And then one more time, we're just going to tuck the toes, lift the lower belly. And squeeze your thighs, press into your hands. See if you can lift both elbows up at the same time and then walk the palms in. Don't worry if you have to lift one elbow up before the other and then come back to your down bow. So as always, pick the option in your practice that works the best for you. And the beauty of this practice here is that you're on, we're on a video so you can always pause, work on a few things and then kind of continue on with the practice. All right, so we're back in down dog. I need you to breathe. Ground into your knuckles, your fingers. Go ahead. Take another breath. We'll lift the left leg up when we breathe in. Send your left knee to your right elbow when you exhale, and then when you breathe in again, lift your left leg up, step your left foot forward, bring it between your hands. Open up, warrior two, breathe. Reach your arms wide, straighten your left leg, and then come into Trikonasana. Left hand down, right arm up, pull the arms apart, press into your back foot, reach your head forward. Breathe. Bending your left knee, look down. Just bring your right hand down, sweep it all the way over. Come to the back of your mat, turning your back heel up, bend the front knee. Step the back of the mat. Walk your right foot to the right edge of your mat. Lower your left knee down. Allow your hips to melt. Good. Lift your chest. Pause here first. Try not to let your right knee point out. Hug your right knee in for now. Keeping your hips pressing towards the front edge here of your mat. Lifting your chest as well. So from here, left hand walks forward a little bit more. Lift your right toes, let your right knee point out to the right side. Right hand can press the hip away and lean your right shoulder back. Stay here. If you like, you can bend your left knee. Right hand can reach back for the foot. 
Again, try not to push your hips back to meet your heel. Instead, keep your hips pressing forward and allow your heel to slowly eventually meet your hip, your glutes. Breathe. If you have that back foot, let it go slowly. Don't allow it to spring. Place your hands down. Tuck your back toes. Send your right leg back. You can go straight to Dower Dog or Vinyasa. Breathe. Good. Then from here, the left leg will lift up. Inhale. Exhale, bring your left knee to your left elbow. And then inhale, sweep it up. Exhale, left knee to the right elbow. Inhale, lift it up. Exhale, left knee to the left elbow again. Try to lift it higher than the elbow. Just stay here. Push your leg into the arm. You can bend the elbows a little bit. Stay, or you're trying to drag your right foot. Lift the hips, lean forward. Right leg can get a little lighter. And then we're sending just the right leg back. Left leg lifts back up to the sky. Inhale. Exhale, step your left foot. Bring it between your hands. Right heel comes down, warrior two. Bring the right arm behind you, trying to reach for your left hip or your left thigh. Reverse your warrior. That front knee bent, back leg strong. Breathe. From here, windmill, left hand down, right hand down. You're just gonna walk it all the way back to the top of your mat. Good. So having that right leg straight, walk the right foot, keep it right foot between your hands. Bending the front knee. Then from here, palms connect. Pushing into the hands, you're going to start to lean forward. Glide your left leg. Float it up. Keeping the right knee bent. Right hand on a block or on the mat. And then start to lift your right hip. As you straighten the leg, allow your left arm to float up as well. Breathe. Take another inhale. Staying a little longer, or you can just bend your left knee, hold the foot, push the foot back into the hands. And then letting the foot go slowly. Place your hands down onto the mat. So try to find your standing splits. Your left glute stays strong as you lift the leg up. You might want to hop the right foot back a little bit if you want to work on your hops. And again, it's not about really swinging that left leg. It's keeping your bottom leg really strong and trying to focus more on lifting your belly rather than trying to lift your legs. So you can just hop light. Nothing fancy needs to happen. You can take this up against the wall. If you have someone who can spot you, who knows what they're doing, you can have that, have them help you as well. Good, breathe. And then from here, you can hop, you can send the legs back, you can walk the feet back, find your chaturanga, skip it if you need. Up dog when you breathe in, downward dog when you breathe out. Take an inhale, exhale, sigh it out. Bring your knees down gently. And once again, we'll come into a child's pose. Remember, we've all, I'm giving you lots of options and sometimes certain options will work on one side or sometimes even just certain days, the body feels a little better. Um, so don't feel like you have to get the same thing on both sides every single time or try every single option. You can always come back to this at a different time. Just give your body time to adjust. So just taking another breath here in your child's pose. And then we'll come back to our downward facing dog. From down dog, we'll breathe into plank. Lower all the way down onto the belly. Untuck your toes. Lift the chest. Walk your elbows forward. So we're coming back into our sphinx pose. Shift back a little here. Elbows dig, forearms parallel, palms face down, shoulders drawn away from the ears again. All right, so you can tuck the toes when we lift up or you can leave the toes untucked. That means that your ankles need to work 
extra hard. You want to feel like you don't have ankles when you lift up. So you can tuck your toes the first round or you can give it a shot here. Again, everything else is working hard. Elbows dig down. It's not really mu that much about your palms and it's mostly your core that helps you sustain this pose. So I want you to breathe in and start to exhale this time and lift your hips up. Try to tuck your tailbone. Tops of your feet can stay on the mat, but you really shouldn't be able to feel your ankles or your knees. This is just a really straight line of energy coming from your core, shooting out from your toes. And then slowly lower your hips. When you inhale, lift your chest. Stay here. Exhale, you can also lift your forearms. As long as you're not crunching into the low back or dumping the weight into your low back, I want you to lift your heart forward. Shoulders pull down. Again, breathe in. Exhale, lower down. Take an inhale here. Exhale, feel free to tuck your toes or you lift your core, dig into your elbows. Breathe. The next time you exhale, you will lower back down. Inhale, lift your chest forward. Exhale, lift your elbows. Take another inhale. Exhale, lower your elbows down. Good. So we're going to just lift the hips, interlace the hands, walk your knees a little closer, and then you can just let your head hang out. You don't have to bring your head onto the mat when you lift your knees up. So your head can just stay. Your knees can also stay. So digging into the elbows, don't let your shoulders squeeze up to the ears, don't let your chest sink and your shoulder blades squeeze together. You wanna to separate your shoulder blades. Maintaining a really strong shoulder support here, we can lower the head if you like, or lift the knees. So stay here if that's all you need for today. You're also welcome to walk your feet forward, walk them forward a little more. And then if you have an inversion practice here, you can come into it. So try to, if your head is on the mat, there's no jumping up or hopping up from the legs. If your head is on the mat, you might wanna to try to walk your feet in, squeeze your thighs towards your chest, lifting your feet up slowly. And then over time, maybe lifting to point your knees up and eventually straightening the legs. But there's no rush, you can stay down here. You can stay with one leg extended. You can come into a forearm stand if you like, so you can separate the hands. And then any other version, as long as your head is not on the mat, you can work on hopping up. So focus again is on just lifting the hips. Don't worry too much about where your feet are, but if the core is, con is contained and engaged and your elbows are pressing down, you're pushing the floor away, whatever it is that you are choosing to come into should feel light. So breathing there, just a few more breaths. Squeeze your legs. If your legs are extended up, try to have them actively squeezing together. Again, elbows are digging down into the mat. If your forearms are on the mat, if you're in a handstand, grip into your knuckles and your fingers a little more. And then the next time you exhale, start to slowly bring your legs down. And we'll come right into a child's pose. In this child's pose, you're welcome to bring your palms by your feet. Allow your forehead to just rest. Slow your breath. One more breath here. And the next time that you inhale, just slowly lift your spine up. Turn your head, roll the shoulders. Good. I'm gonna stay on your shins and lift the hips up. Pressing into the tops of your feet, have your palms by your side, shoulders are relaxed. You want a nice line from your head to your knees. You're pushing into the tops of your feet, into your shins, so I want you to take an inhale. When you exhale, don't stick your butt back or hips forward, keep the straight line, tailbone slightly tucked, lean back, press into the tops of your feet, and then slowly push yourself back up. So just remembering how much strength you're, you need to use in your legs to sustain that. We're going to just do that one more time. You're leaning back. So try not to lose that straight line and then pull yourself back up. Good. So it's lots of legs here. I want you to try to keep that same strength in your legs, but tucking your toes now. Hands coming to your low back. 
I want you to feel a tucking of the tailbone. So the lines in the front of your pants, make that disappear by pressing it forward. Hands on the low back, squeeze your shoulder blades together. Keep trying to tuck your tailbone as you push your hips forward. Lift your heart up. So while you sustain this, draw your shoulders back. Feel your chest lift up towards the ceiling. And the hips the whole time are pressing forward, away from the back, away from your heels. And your chest lifts. When you exhale, pull yourself back up slowly. Untuck your toes, sit on your heels. And then from here, we will twist to the left side, just gently. Back through center, twist to the right. Back through center. I'm gonna lift the hips up and do the same thing again. So you can tuck your toes, bring your hands to the low back, elbows draw back, squeeze your shoulder blades together. Press your hip crease forward, lift your chest. As long as there's no strain in the low back, if this feels okay, arms can release. Try to squeeze the shoulder blades together, you're reaching, maybe you find your heels. Notice if you're sinking back, I need you to press your hips forward, lift your chest up. If you wish to stay a little longer or move towards Kapotasana or other variations, perhaps pausing the video for now as you go a little deeper into your back bend, but otherwise, Try to maintain the strength in your legs, hip creases pressing forward, chest lifting up. Take another breath here. And when you exhale, nice and slow, you wanna use your core to pull yourself back up. And again, sit. If sitting on your shins does not work for you, sit cross-legged, that's fine. And from here, we will side bend over to the left. Breathe. Coming back up, move to the other side. Coming back up. And then palms back on the mat, downward facing dog. So shake up the lines, feel your down dog here. We'll do one more round of vinyasa, inhale to plank. Exhale, Chaturanga. Breathe in, up dog or cobra. Breathe out, downward facing dog. Start to slowly walk your feet to the top of your mat. When you inhale, look up halfway. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees, lift your arms. Use the help of your hands if you need. Slowly start to sit down. Extend your legs out. Shake it up. Arms gonna need to reach forward, squeeze your legs, we'll lower back together, breathe in. When you exhale, round your spine for 10, nine, eight, breathe, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Lower your head, arms reach overhead, stretch out your body, breathe in, sigh it out. Bend your knees, hug your legs in. Gently rock side to side. Straighten the legs up to the ceiling. Good. Squeeze your thighs together. Arms will also reach up. Take an inhale. When you exhale, lift the head, lift the shoulder blades, reach your arms forward. Keep the legs squeezing together. Knees can be bent. And then when you inhale, slowly lower your legs forward about halfway. As you exhale, pull yourself back up. You can keep the legs straight, you can bend the knees, but then you're just gonna slowly release the legs. Okay, so we're coming back to a seated position. Shake out the legs. Now, bring the hands slightly behind you. Feel like you're back bending here, so you're lifting your chest, drawing your shoulder blades back together. Good. Point your toes, squeeze your legs. So the spine is more of an arch rather than rounding, especially the low back. So I really want you to feel like you're arching the spine. So if you need to, you can bend your knees in order to arch. We will lean back a little bit. Release your hands, make them into a fist. Try to lift your collarbones up towards your fist. Push your belly forward. Squeeze the back muscles. Legs are strong. Press your legs down. Good. So this strengthens the back body here. 
Try to lift your chest, almost like we're trying to come into fish pose. So really lift the belly, lift the chest up. Squeeze your legs. And breathe. Take one more inhale. And exhale, relax. Flex your toes towards your face. You can bend your knees. You can hold the back of your thighs. Lengthen your chest forward. You can bring your hands towards your shins, your ankles, the heels. Don't worry if you can't quite grab the foot. It's not really about holding the foot or bringing your face towards your legs, but instead, try to lengthen your spine. Pull your chest forward. Breathe into the low back. That was just working hard and sustaining that fish-like pose. Pressing your thighs downwards. Draw your thigh bones into your hips. Don't worry about the depth, but focus more on creating length. Breathe. Just trying to lift the chest forward for another breath. And then from here, you can relax your head. Next time you inhale, lift your spine up slowly. Good. Bend both your knees, bring the soles of your feet together. So there's two options. You can bring your heels as close to your hips as you like. You can also bring your feet a little further away and just allow your body to drape forward. Again, just breathing into the lower back. Next time you inhale, lift your spine up, close your legs like a book. Straighten the legs. Shake it out. Lower all the way down again. Stretch the body, stretch the arms overhead, breathe in. Sigh it out. Good. Hug your right leg in. Squish it towards your chest. Using the left hand, guide your right leg over towards the left. Extend your right arm out. Turn your head over to the right. Breathe into your twist. Allow your right shoulder to get heavy. And as you breathe, try to breathe into the lower belly, the lower back, but also all the way up to the right side of your chest. So feeling even the pec here on the right side, pec major and minor. Adding the leg back, straightening the right leg, hug the left leg in. And then using the right hand, guide the leg over to the right. Left arm extends out, turn your head to the left. Once again, allow your shoulder, your chest to be heavy. Breathe into the lower belly, lower back, into the ribs, into your chest. And then guide the leg back through center. Straightening the left leg, shake it out. Taking your Shavasana here, so legs traditionally are straight with arms by your side. If you wish to bend your knees, you can have feet on the mat, thighs together. You can have your legs in butterfly. Your palms can rest on your torso. They can reach out. They can be overhead. Whatever feels good. Having neutral spine, shoulders and hips. Closing your eyes. If you wish to have an extended Shavasana, perhaps pausing the video here. Setting maybe a timer if you like, or just letting the Shavasana be natural. Otherwise, just relax the body. Allow your breath to return to its natural rhythm. Soften your face. Allow your 
body to gently melt into the ground. If you need longer, pause the video. Otherwise, start to bring your awareness back as you deepen your breath. Move your fingers, your toes, turn your head side to side. And if it feels nice, you can stretch your arms overhead, point your toes, take a deep breath in. Sigh it out. Bend your knees. And roll to right or left side. And when you're ready, you're just pressing into the palms. Make your way back up to a comfortable seated position. So we finish the practice the way we started. So you want your spine nice and tall. Shoulders are relaxed. Closing the eyes. Just reconnecting to breath and body. Noticing the effects of your efforts. The effects of your time spent on the mat. And we'll close with a sound of Om. Bring your palms together in front of your heart in prayer. Take a deep breath in. Om. And bow your head. Thank yourself for making the time for your practice. Hope you're able to find some peace, love, gratitude on the mat today. Take that with you. Share it with the people that you are still in contact with. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining us today, joining me today. Uh, Jonathan and I will continue to work on giving you more videos. Please let us know if there's anything we can work on to improve our videos or if there's anything else you'd like to see in our classes. Please be patient and if you do like these videos, you're welcome to donate. We have our emails on our bio or you can contact us. Thank you so much again. Have a great one. Stay safe and healthy.